This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, visit them at a ham fest near you or call 920-435-2973 or online at pl-259.com. It's Ham Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's time for Ham Talk Live. It's episode number 107. CW Ops with Rob K6RB recorded live on Thursday, March 22nd, 2018. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we're joined by Rob Brownstein, K6RB, and we will take your calls in just a few minutes. Last week here on the show, John Mills, KC9BRX, was here to talk about Skywarn Nets. And if you missed the show, you can listen anytime at hamtalklive.com or on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeart Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, SoundCloud, or even YouTube, and uh, lots of other podcast players. Uh, if you want to catch the podcast version of the show. So get your CW questions ready to go. After the interview, you can give us a call. That telephone number is 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Um, if you'd like to give us a call, you can do that. Don't, don't do that just now because we won't be able to answer your call. But uh, later on, that is the number, so you can have that handy. It's 812 812- Six three eight four two six one. So I'll be back with Rob right after this word from Tower Electronics right here on Ham Talk Live. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you in part by Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics has been the Ham's dime store since 1978. When you need connectors, mobile and handheld antennas, cables, or adapters, visit Scott or Jill at a Ham Fest near you. Or you can order online at pl-259.com or call 920-435-2973. Stock up on those supplies like PL-259 and end connectors, SMA adapters, audio cables, soldering supplies, mobile antennas, and ham sticks. Their silver-plated end connectors are even used on the International Space Station. Tower Electronics carries MFJ, Comet, Daiwa, OPEC, Workman, and HamPro products. And don't miss their 0% off sale going on now. Tower Electronics, online at pl-259.com. Proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. We're not sure what's up with the fifth dentist, but four out of five dentists recommend listening to Ham Talk Live. Soon you'll know the rhythm of the code. A dit is a dot, a da is a dash. The rhythm of the code. Alpha. Ta-da. Bravo. Charlie. Thanks to Scott and Jill at Tower Electronics for sponsoring the show tonight to help bring you Ham Talk Live. April 6th and 7th, they'll be at Belton, Texas, and April 7th, they'll be at Staunton, Wisconsin, April 14th, Mobile, Alabama, April 21st, Gainesville, Florida, and April 28th in Calhoun, Georgia, and of course, then they'll be at the Dayton Hamvention. You can always give them a call, though, if they're not at a ham fest near you, at 920-435-2973. Or you can visit their website at pl-259.com and tell them you heard it on Ham Talk Live. Our guest tonight is Rob Brownstein, K6RB. Rob was first licensed in 1958 as KN2UMU at age 11. And after upgrading to general a year later and then extra class in 1970, he moved to California in 1973. 
Uh, with the move came a new call sign in 1982 to NS6V, and then in 1997, K6RB, which is his current call sign. And Rob operates uh, a lot of CW, splitting his time between rag chewing and contesting. He has a modern SO2R, single op two radio station, and uh, a vintage station as well. He's a member of the Northern California Contest Club, the First Class CW Operators Club, and tonight we'll be talking about CW Ops, which he's also a member of, and he is also a mentor, advisor, and teacher in the CW Ops Academy. And in 2017, last year at the Dayton Hamvention, he received the Technical Achievement Award from the Dayton Amateur Radio Association. So, Rob, thanks for joining us on Ham Talk Live tonight. My pleasure. Well, we wanted to talk about uh, CW Ops a little bit, so tell us about the organization and how it got started and, and what the goal is of having a group for CW operators. Okay, so uh, CW Ops was conceived of around November 2009 after a bunch of rag chew CUSOs with me and about 11 other guys. Um, we kind of thought about a new CW club that had what we th considered to be unique aspects, which I'll describe in a second. And by January 1, 2010, just a few months later, we launched. And at the time of launch, we had 127 members. Today, I saw that we just invited number 1,997 to join the club. And that represents 71 countries. So it's uh, taken off probably... A thousand times more than any of us ever assumed it would, but it's uh, very gratifying to have been part of it and a, and a founder of the group. Now, um, you might say, well, gee, does Ham Radio really need another CW club? After all, there's SKCC and FIS and FOC. What do you need another CW club? And that's a legitimate question to ask. And what we what we concluded, the 12 of us, was that some of the clubs really had no standard for what you had to be able to do to get in. You just had to sign up and pay your money. And some of the clubs had very strict standards. But what was missing was any mentoring program that would help people achieve those standards. That was my motivation. And so... Uh, we started CW Ops for the express purpose of having a club that was devoted to CW and CW Arts, but a main facet of the club was going to be this mentoring program, which we now call CW Academy. All right, very good. And so your goal is to um, train people to achieve those those criteria then, um, as a CW operator. Correct. And, you know, I was thinking about it this morning. In a way, CW Ops is like the, the elephant with the, the blind people groping it. There are some people who, when you say, what is CW Ops? They go, oh, those are the guys that do that contest three times a day, every Wednesday at 30 words per minute plus, And, uh, you know, take up a big swath of bandwidth for an hour and then they and then the band goes quiet. And that's one aspect. And then there are people who go, oh, I never heard about that. But aren't they the guys who have that free program where they teach Morse code? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there, there's different aspects of, of the club. But uh, I think the one that is most commendable from my perspective anyway is the CW Academy. And as you pointed out, Neil, the, the goal of that is to help people either learn Morse or improve their skills. But, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the ultimate goal is if they're interested in joining the club to help them get to a point where they meet the qualifications. So let me tell you what those are. Being able to send and receive 25 words a minute. Now, you probably remember when the FCC had incentive licensing and in order to get the highest class of license, you had to send and receive 
20 words a minute. So we're actually requiring more than what you required to do uh, the amateur extra. And the reason is we feel, after much discussion, that if you can't copy 25 and send 25 words a minute, then you really are not going to be ideally competent to have a long conversational QSO because much slower than 25 gets cumbersome. And if you go much above it, then you're going to run into people who can't copy it. So 25 is kind of a sweet spot. Okay. Very, very interesting. Well, um, on the website that you um, have for CW Ops, that's cwops.org. Um, you have a ton of resources. You've got uh, everything from software to contest information, and and the CW Academy is one of the things that I hear about the most. So, uh, tell us about how somebody could join the academy and get in there and and get up to that. Uh, 25 word a minute speed. Okay, so originally, when we first started the club, as I said, in January, January 1st, 2010, um, we had some ideas for what we wanted to do post launch. Number one was have a weekly um, event, which we call CWT. And originally, it was once a month on a Wednesday, three different times for an hour each time. That's now grown to 52 weeks a year, an hour a time, three times. So 156 events per year, which is by far the most of any kind of contest or pseudo contest. Um, We also wanted to have an annual contest that was a CW only contest. And one which didn't require having multiple towers and yaggies and amplifiers in order to have a respectable score or even possibly win it. And so we created a thing called CW Open, which we hold at the first Saturday of September every year. But CW Academy was the one that we knew was going to take the longest to roll out because it really required a lot of preparation. And... uh, Originally, the idea was to create a kind of a marriage brokership where people that wanted help would sign up and let us know what bands they can operate, what days and times, and people who wanted to help them could do the same, and then we would try to, you know, marry them. Did not work. It was a disaster. Um, I did teach that first semester, and I had a small group of people that I was working with, But what was interesting, Neil, is that the people that signed up for that first CW Academy uh, rollout, we assumed most of the people would be people who were already CW capable and just wanted to improve their skills. And what we found was three quarters of the signups were people who did not know CW or could not copy it, you know, greater than 10 words a minute. And so we said, oh, boy, we need to have a beginner's level, not just an intermediate and advanced level. So we created three levels. The beginning level takes you from knowing zero code at the end of eight weeks to knowing how to be able to head, copy, and send anywhere from 13 to 15 words a minute, eight weeks. Then the second program, which we call level two, that first one's called level one, Level two takes you from that point. Anybody that can copy above 10 words a minute, we but less than, say, 20 words a minute would go to level two. And level two gets them to a point where they can copy head copy conversational QSOs at 18 to 20 words a minute and contests at over 20 words a minute. And then level three, the advanced program, takes you from that point and our typical graduate can contest at up to 30 words a minute and head copy comfortably conversational QSOs at 25. So when you finish level three, you may you meet the qualification to join CW Ops. And I think probably 80 or 90 percent of our graduates do so right at that point. They're they're invited to join. They get sponsored and boom, they're in. 
And the one thing that I personally do, and I, I'm sure other advisors do as well, is I always tell my, my level three class, hey, when you graduate in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. We have a ton of people signing up for level one, and we don't have enough advisors. Would you consider advising a level one group? And so it's a self-perpetuating program. And at the end of 2017, Jerry, AC4BT, who manages the program, estimates that we trained 3,000 hams since 2011. And our run rate per year is probably 400, maybe up to 450, because we do three semesters, two months at a time, January, February, April, May, September, October. And to, and to become uh, a, a, a CW Academy student, all you have to do is go to the website, which you gave the URL, at cwops.org, click on the tab for CW Academy, follow it to the student area, sign up, submit the sign-up sheet, boom, and you'll, get, you'll hear from Jerry within 24 hours. The one thing that we are constantly trying to to shorten is the um, backlog. Um, if you signed up today for April, May, it's full. In fact, September, October is full. So if you signed up today, worst case, you're looking at January, February. But we have people whose schedules change or their plans change who drop out towards the last minute before the classes are constituted. And so slots open up. You just never know. But we never have enough advisors to be able to do it, you know, on demand. And that's ultimately what we would love to be able to do. The other thing that we did this last semester um, in January and February was we rolled out a new program called Youth CW Academy, like Y-O-U-T-H, that is focused on people between the ages of 11 and 19. They're taught in age peer groups so that any student, once this program is fully running, would not be grouped with anybody more than two years older or two years younger, for the obvious reason. Um, and so we teach them level one, just like we do at the regular CW Academy, but they learn with kids who have the same kinds of experiences and knowledge that they have. And so they have something in common. And the goal is once they graduate, to get them on the air as soon as possible, get them talking to other young people, and ultimately recreate the environment that existed in the 50s and 60s when there was a novice band with a lot of young people all communicating with CW. And then, of course, we want to give them the skills and the protocols and the knowledge to be able to do that competently. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole incentive licensing argument and, and the new proposal to change some of the uh, entry-level license or, or privileges or whatever. But one of the things that I keep hearing over and over again is we, we it would be nice if we could find a way to not be so reliant upon a test that we would do something with mentoring and elmering and, and bringing people along. But then it's like, you know, like you said, you, you, you've you already got a shortage of um, advisors to, to do this, and you've got a backlog of people waiting to, to get into this. But, I mean, th this is addressing that issue that y you all are – providing that training and support and elmering that we, we don't have. Uh, I agree with you. Um, I think that's crucial. And we, you know, I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten since 2011 from people who've signed up for Academy who said, I've tried five different words, ways to learn CW. None of them work for me. I'm going to try this one and see what happens. And they succeed. And later when I, with my groups and the other advisors, poll their groups at the end and say, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, what would you change, so on and so forth, invariably, 
the thing that makes CW Academy a success is the human factor. The curriculum and all that stuff, yeah, that, that, that matters. There's lots of great stuff on the web. You can go to Learn CW Online, who one of our members actually did, uh, Fabian Kurtz. But it's, you know, it, it requires you to kind of know what you need to do next. Whereas with this, you have an advisor who is basically assessing you every time you meet, which is 16 times over the course of two months, and saying, hey, you know, you need to work on this a little bit more. Don't worry about that. You have that down and so on and so forth. And it's that human factor that is the critical factor. That's the success factor. Well, it sounds like an excellent, excellent program. And, and again, if uh, anyone's out is out there that uh, could be an advisor to um, some of these uh, level one classes, especially, um, you know, to get people started and, and free up some people to do uh, some of the other levels, why uh, well, that would be a, a wonderful thing and a way to uh, to mentor more people. And, and, of course, young people, that's that's where uh, a lot of my work is, and so I, I always encourage that. But but I, 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 got, I can't let this go, Rob, because this has been something that, that's been kind of particular to me. Um because when I got into ham radio, the class that I wanted to, or that I was going to go take, I should say, I don't know that I knew that I wanted to do this, but the class that I was going to go to with my dad had an age requirement of 13, and I was five. Now, granted, I was the exception at five. There, there haven't been, but, you know, a, a, maybe a dozen kids at five years old get into ham radio but the age requirement was there for for 13 years old and i came in there and copied code and, and proved that i could do it and then they said oh maybe we better you know let this kid take the test and give this a try and it worked so you said 11, which I think is a good spot because you're catching a lot of those kids that are um, in the majority, you know, at that younger age. But what do you do for those that are younger? Uh, that's a great question, Neil. And it came up while I was teaching the first pilot program of YCWA. I got a, a message from a fellow who said, I have a, uh, a niece who's eight years old. And she asked me to tell her what the letters are for uh, her name. Her name was L-A-C-Y. And so he taught her the, the, the letters. And then she proceeded after she sent his, her name, she sent his name which was Malcolm. And he said, how did you learn all those other letters? She goes, I was listening while you were learning in CW Academy. So when he told me that, I said, look, the reason that we started at 11 and went to 19 really had to do with the age peer group setup that we had and recognizing practicality that we already have a shortage of advisors. We're going to have an, an, an even more critical shortage of advisors so we have to draw the line somewhere let's make it 11 um that's not to say that if things really take off and we start getting kids that are eight nine and ten that we wouldn't create yet another group but the other limitation and i'm sure you had this when you were five is that even though we in ham radio morse code we we do a lot of abbreviating you still have to be able to spell and typical five-year-olds have a lot of trouble with that. Some eleven-year-olds <laughs> do. So that, that that's kind of the other aspect to the to the age limitation is we picked an age that we felt had enough capability to be able to do what they needed to do for head copy skills. And uh, you know, the nineteen that may be you know pushing the upper limit because by then a lot of the kids are in college; they've got other interests and, and distractions, but we, we don't know. We, we're really 
going to be trying to find out as we push this out where this sweet spot is. And we may change things down the road. It's certainly going to be a, a work in progress, Neil. Well, and, and you know, like I said, I think that's a, a good place to put it uh, just from the sheer numbers that uh, I think, you know, the numbers below that are, are not going to be zero, but they're going to be smaller. And with your limitations of, you know, the number of instructors and that kind of thing, I, I think that's a good, uh, a good number to go for. But, um, but yeah, I, I, that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting to see uh, how many you get, but uh, there, there could be some, some possibilities down the road for that. Well, uh, well, what I, w- oh, what go I was going to do, yeah, what I was going to do with with Lacey was teach her myself one on one, so that she wouldn't be in a group with kids who were a lot older than her, and uh, for a variety of reasons having to do with scheduling on her end, it it didn't work out for this semester, but we may do it in in September, um, and I actually have a group that I'll be starting in a in a week or so of three brothers. I think their ages are 12, uh, no, 12, 10, and 8. So there is an 8-year-old in that group. It's a sibling, and they're all going to be learning together. So, you know, every every rule was meant to have exceptions, and this one does as well. So it's not hard and fast, but it's kind of a guideline. Sure, sure, absolutely. And, and that's what it was at, at that point, I, and I'm – realize that that's kind of the exception so that's uh that's good stuff well we're up against a break so let me uh get on with the break and then we'll come back and talk to rob uh we can talk about um some of the software uh available and contests and that kind of thing uh but uh and i know we've had a couple of people try to call during the interview part so uh, we'll try to get some calls in as well, and we'll be back with Rob right after this word from the National Voice of America Museum of Broadcasting and Amateur Radio Newsline right here on Ham Talk Live. The National Voice of America Museum of Broadcasting, located in Westchester, Ohio, just north of Cincinnati, is only two minutes off I-75. The museum is the former home of the Voice of America Bethany Relay Station. Tours are now available every Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can see the control room, a 200,000-watt transmitter, and the most comprehensive collection of inventions by the iconic Powell Crosley, Jr. Also on display is a huge antique radio exhibit and R.L. Drake's personal collection of most every Drake amateur rig ever made. This is a unique opportunity to see the amateur radio in action and have a chance to get on the air from WC8VOA. Admission is only $5 a person. The museum is located close to historic WLWAM and tons of shopping and restaurants. Take a trip to the VOA Museum or visit us online at voamuseum.org. Nominations are now open for the Amateur Radio Newsline, Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF, Young Ham of the Year Award. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. Since 1986, we've had the honor of celebrating the accomplishments of youth in ham radio, and we want to know about your exceptional young ham. You'll find the rules and a nominating form by clicking the YHOTY tab on ARNewsline.org. Fill it out, send it in, and we'll see you and an amazing young ham at the Huntsville, Alabama Ham Fest in August. Thanks, and 73, from Amateur Radio Newsline. Ham Talk Live with Neil Rap. Join the conversation. Call us on voice with Skype at Ham Talk Live or give us a call at 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Now, here's more Ham Talk Live. Ham Talk Live is on the air every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time right here at HamTalkLive.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, right now it's time for your call. So if you've been trying to call in, now's your chance. If you have a question for Rob about CW Ops, give us a call. The phone number again 
is 812-NET-HAM-1, 812-638-4261. Or you can Skype us. Uh, we're Ham Talk Live on Skype and also Ham Talk Live on Twitter. And you can uh, get a hold of us that way as well. And um, during the uh, commercial break, actually, um, Rob and I were, were talking a little bit more about to things and, and he mentioned um, about the speed of the characters and and Rob I'm going to go ahead and uh, and take a call here and and have that on hold but just uh, briefly can you speak to the uh, to what we were talking about on the the break with the uh, speed of the characters and, and spacing right uh, one of the problems that all of the young people back in the day, in you know the late 50s and early 60s had was that they, they learned code proportionately so when you listen to W1AW code practice at 5 words a minute the letters were sent at 5 words a minute we don't do that from level 1 on we send the letters at 20 word per minute letter speed we may add a little delay between letters called fonsworthing but they don't ever hear letters being sent slower than 20 words a minute, which forces them not to try to count dits and daws and just to recognize the sound of a character rather than try to, to you know, decipher the dits and daws. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and, you know, at, at, like I said, at, at, we were talking to the word break at, at age five, That's that was it. You know, that was... Okay, dit dollar is A, and I write an A, you know, and, and I knew some some basic words, but um, you know that that uh, made it harder to to get up to speed, um, and and so I think uh, that you're definitely on the right track. Well, we've got a phone call on the line, so let's go to the phones. Hello, who is this? Hi, this is Hank K E zero C U. Hi, Hank. Thanks hey. for calling in. Hi, how are you doing? Excellent. You're doing good, Hank. Hey, I, I've got a question uh, for you. Uh, how do the teachers and the mentors interact with the student? Is it done via email, Skype, all on the air, or just how is that connection made and maintained? That's a great question, and that was really the critical piece to the whole CW Academy concept. And uh, one of the our early guys in the program, W0UCE, a guy named Jack Ritter, who is now in a, a silent key, came up with it. And he said, let's use audio video internet. And at that time, we were using a program called OVO, O-O-V-O-O. Now we use Skype group calling. But what that does is it allows you to have a single advisor with up to five students where we can see and hear each other, just like we were in a training room together. And each one of us has a, a paddle and a keyer, and so we can send Morse code. And so what typically happens when we meet, which is two nights a week, they'll have practiced something before the meeting. And as soon as we get through, you know, hey, does anybody have any questions? No. Okay. I'll just say, based on what they should have practiced that day, I'll say, John, what's this word? And I'll send the word. And he'll go, oh, it's such and such. Great. And then I'll go around the group and quickly assess how they're doing. And sometimes I'll even do something where I'll send something, have them send it back to me, and then tell me what it is. And I, there's a psychological reason for doing that, that actually helps them learn faster than if they tell you what the word is and then try to send it. But that's a whole other discussion. Was that helpful, Hank? Yeah. Uh, so basically, you need a uh, code practice oscillator and a Skype connection on your PC. Is that right? Uh, you need a Skype application. You need a PC that has broadband internet. You need a paddle. And you need a keyer, not a code practice oscillator. You need a keyer. So it could be a standalone keyer like an MFJ Econo keyer with its little speaker so you can hear the, the mic picks it up. Or if you have a radio that has a built-in keyer and a side tone, you could 
you know, make sure it's not transmitting and just use the, the built-in keyer and side tone. Anything that's going to be audible enough to be picked up by the webcam will allow everybody in the group to hear what you're sending. Okay, good explanation. Great. Thank Thanks for calling in, Hank. Appreciate it. Good night. Good night. Good night. 812-638-4261 is the phone number if you have a question for Rob about CW Ops or the CW Academy at CW Ops. Give us a call right now. We have a few minutes remaining, 812-638-4261. Dr. Scott Wright, K0MD, says thanks for uh, supporting uh, CW operations, so... uh, Thanks to uh, to Scott for that, and um, let's talk a little bit about um, again the website. We we kind of had to to take off a little bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the software that's available and some of the contests that you offer once people are up to speed. Okay, let's talk about the resources. Really, is what you're talking about, and the um, in in the CW Academy area. If you follow the arrow to student resources, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff, MP3 files, uh, booklets, so on and so forth. We have a booklet that says how to use Skype for CW Academy that walks you through how you set it up. We have uh, a program called Morse Trainer, which is for our level one group, and What happened was originally when I first designed the Level 1 program, we didn't have a a tool. And so there was a program online called Morse Translator. And I actually wrote a note to the guy who did it, a guy named Stephen Phillips, and said, hey, you know, we're using your program, but I have to tell people what to type in before they hit play. And he said, send me your curriculum and I will pre-program it. And he did, and he created a thing called Morse Trainer. And it's specific to CW Academy Level 1. So that's a program that anybody can take advantage of. We have booklets that walk you through what you do in Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. Anybody can go to the website, can download the books, can download the the, the, the uh, tools that we have. Um, we're not in this for, you know, profit the, the classes are free. The, the advisors don't get paid. It's a free program. Our goal is to train the next generation of, uh, of CW operators. So if people want to borrow our stuff and use it, God bless them. <laughs> okay. Let's put the contest on hold for a second because we've got another call on the line. So let's go ahead and, uh, and take the call here. Uh, welcome to Ham Talk Live. Who's this? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, good evening. Is this Neil? This is. Hi, Neil. Good evening to you. This is Carmen. And my call is K1LKP, Kilo One Lima Kilo Papa. And, and I know that old rascal Rob from <laughs> working him on the radio many times. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, God bless you, Rob. And, you know, Rob, I, I just want to say congratulations to you and all the folks from CW Ops. And, and you know, on the CW Academy, uh, you have an excellent mentoring program. I, I've I've been reading the mail on a lot of your, you know, the Academy uh, QSOs that they have on, on the band, and, and you guys are doing a great job. So hats off to a, a, a job well done. Thank you, Carmen. I appreciate it, and I hope okay. I see you in a whole bunch of CWTs. Oh, yeah. You, you, know, you know, Rob, I don't mean to tie up this this conversation, but good God, you just mentioned Jack, W0UCE. That man was an absolute humanitarian. For, for people, for ham radio, he was, he was a first-class person. He sure was. And, 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 Yes, and, and and again, you know, uh, you had mentioned about uh, having problems getting advisors. Don't get discouraged. Hang in there. I encourage you to keep up the great work. Really, really. Our our, our, pro- our our problem, Carmen, isn't getting advisors. It's getting them 
quickly enough because the number of people that keep signing up to do level one is growing like a weed. And, you know, we had at one point five advisors. We have about 35 now, but it's, you know, it doesn't matter. The The number of people signing up just keeps growing and the, the backlog stays the same. <laughs> Well, well, good for you. It shows that you're doing the right thing. That's the important thing. Yep. Yes. God bless you. And you know, <laughs> Neil, is Neil there? Yeah, I am there. here. Neil, you know, I, I partake in those weekly events. They have the CW events. And, and it's good for somebody my age because it helps to clear out the cobwebs. <laughs> 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 Okay, listen, everybody have a great day, and God bless you for all your hard work. Take care, Carmen. Yeah, take care, Bye Carmen. Now. Thank you for calling in. We appreciate Bye. it. Okay. And, yeah, Bye yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to get some of those cobwebs cleared out now, too, because that was uh, that was uh, 42 years ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Rob, we've got about a minute and a half left here, so um, – why don't you run down uh, some of those operating activities real quick for us? Okay, CWT is the one that we have every Wednesday. And that means even if it's Christmas on Wednesday or New Year's on Wednesday, there's going to be a CWT. And they're at three different times a day, 1300 Zulu, 1900 Zulu, and 0300 Zulu. They start and end in one hour's time. The exchange is your name, and if you're a member, your membership number. If you're not a member, your state, province, or country. That's it. Very easy. But, boy, if you listen in, you'll find out that those guys are averaging 30, 30 30-plus words a minute. And so it's going to pull you up by the bootstraps. Now, three times a year... After the graduation of each of the CW Academy groups, we have a commemorative CWT where the top speed is 20 or less. And boy, it's amazing how many people come out of the woodwork to do that one because it's like, well, I don't have to work so hard at 30, 35. So anyway, we do that three times a week, every week, 156 times a year. All right, very good. Well, we have just about 20 seconds left here, so uh, any any quick final thoughts before we take off? Um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and, uh, you know, I hope anybody that's interested in learning Morse code will get on the website and sign up, and we'll be happy to give you all the help we can. All right, sounds good, Rob. And again, that website is cwops.org, C-W-O-P-S dot org. And a little little sneak peek, a little teaser here for Amateur Radio Newsline this week. It's coming out on Friday. I just recorded it. And there's a story about CW and a hamster. So just just a little tease there. You'll have to check that out on, on Newsline this week. Well, that is a wrap for this week's edition of Ham Talk Live. Thanks to my guest, Rob Brownstein, K6RB, and everyone out there in cyberspace for listening and calling in and invite you back next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time when Drew Glassbrenner, KO4MA, will be here to talk about AMSAT satellite operations. And for a list of all of our upcoming guests, just go to hamtalklive.com and click on the show schedule link. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours. Don't, 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 don't,